All right, everyone, I've got some great news. Creality just came out with a new printer, so we can throw this old one away. Because we've got the new Ender 5S1. So let's get this thing out of the box and see what it's all about. All right, we've got our instructions and quick start guide, our Z axis here, all of our tools, our real spool of filament here. So gone are the days of giving you the filament in a plastic baggie, like it's some kind of illicit material. The top frame, the heated bed, one more layer of foam reveals the bottom of the 3D printer. Looks like some assembly is required, so let's get started. I've been doing these 3D printer reviews for a little over a year now. And now that I'm older and wiser, I actually take a look at the instruction manual to see how to put these things together. Ah uh, yes, and here's some critical information. Each column is color coded and you need to install them in the right spot. I doubt I would have figured that out myself, so you're definitely gonna wanna page through these instructions before you get started. While I'm working on this part of the printer, I can see it's set to 230 volts. I'm gonna switch that to 115 because I'm in the US. So now that I've got these four pillars installed, I'm gonna install the top of the machine. Then we're gonna put together this Z axis. So I just attach the bed using four screws here. Then you need to flip the thing upside down and put these supports on. But apparently we can just shimmy this in here. Then we put four screws in through the back. Next up, we're gonna install some little plastic supports here. Then the spool holder goes in right back here. The last thing I'm gonna do here is run these wires. So I'll just grab them from back here, run it up through this wiring harness. Then a few of the wires go here. This main 24 pin connector goes up here. The last couple of wires get plugged in somewhere else. Looks like one goes to this filament runout detector. One goes to the Y axis stepper motor. And then the last one goes to this Y axis limit switch. And then down here, we can plug in our Z-axis stepper motor and our Z-axis limit switch. Then finally, we can plug in the heated bed with this threaded connector. Now I'm just putting the final touches on. We've got our spool holder and we've got a bunch of these cable management clips, which I'm gonna use to tidy up all of these cables running up the backside. I was kind of iffy about this Z-axis when I saw the initial pictures of this machine, but it seems to be very sturdy. So I don't really mind it at all. I think it's probably gonna be fine. It's got an anti-backlash nut here. So as it's moving up and down, it should be able to do this very precisely. And these linear rods are very thick and strong. I've just got a little bit of noise, a little bit of crunchy noise. I think the crunching noise is coming from this linear bearing over here. I might have tightened it up a little bit too much. I'm gonna see what happens if I loosen these screws. I'm gonna detach this Z lead screw coupler. Yeah, it's kind of making a grinding noise and it's catching a little bit. I'm gonna attach this right next to where the noise is coming from so you can hear it better. It sounds a little bit like crunching or rustling paper. So I don't think that's normal, but I also don't expect it to affect print quality. I'm gonna reach out to Creality and see if they can send me a replacement bearing or maybe just replace both of the bearings on this machine. Well, on with the review. I'm going to uh, fasten down these wires here. The nice thing about Creality is they always seem to provide you a pair of wire clippers. So these are always useful for all sorts of stuff when you're dealing with 3D printers. These wheels are kind of loose, so you're gonna wanna tighten these up a little bit. These rails seem pretty well thought out. It's nice and easy to reach in here and adjust the tension on these V-Groove wheels. The last V-Groove wheels to adjust are on the X carriage. It looks like you kind of have to reach up through this duct. If we take a close look here, you can see this fan duct has about three to four inches of ducting to flow through before the air exits and is cooling down the part. It's kind of a waste of material first off and second off, you're wasting a lot of the potential of this air to flow. You're having a lot of back pressure from these long channels and these bends. So it's not a hugely efficient design and it's one that I'll probably improve on in my next video. I'm not a big fan of this fan duct design. However, I do like that they're using a 5015 fan. That's a big upgrade from what you get on the Ender 3 S1. 
The Ender 3 S1 just has this dinky little 4010 fan that makes a lot of noise but doesn't move a whole lot of air. Let's go ahead and tension these wheels. These are quite loose, so get in here and tighten those up. You just want to be careful not to damage the fan duct, which is kind of in the way here. You have pretty limited access in here, so this step is kind of annoying, but I was able to get it to work. Just take your time and be careful not to break anything. One thing to note about all of these Delrin wheel axes is they're using four wheels per rail, so that should give you a slightly better grip. I think using three wheels is the minimum, and having four wheels is better, because then at least the wheels on the top and the bottom are under the same amount of compression. If you have two wheels on the top and one wheel on the bottom, then that bottom wheel is going to be pushing twice as hard to make up for the two wheels on the top, and you'll end up with that bottom wheel failing or developing flat spots a lot sooner than the top wheels. By having two wheels on the top and two wheels on the bottom, they're under equal tension, so you can get a tighter fit with less downsides in terms of the wheels failing. And finally, I will put this Bowden tube in place. This Bowden tube is really only there to help support this cable and guide the filament. This is a direct drive machine, which has drive gears directly on the hot end. There's a number of advantages to using a direct drive machine, so I'm glad to see all of Creality's latest offerings using a direct drive extruder. All right, and that should do it. I think we're ready to print with this machine. I'm just gonna plug it in here and turn it on. So something that I immediately noticed is this spare nozzle that they're providing is a little bit longer than their typical nozzles. So I think this is like a, almost like a half volcano nozzle. It's not gonna be quite as long as a volcano, but it's giving you a little bit extra melt zone, which should, in theory, offer you a little bit more volumetric flow rate so you can print faster. If we look at the print area, it looks like it's identical to the Ender 3. This is an Ender 3 bed. This is a PEI upgraded one that I'm using, but you can see it's the exact same size. I always replace these polycarbonate print surfaces with a PEI based print surface. That just gives me better print adhesion and I have an easier time removing my prints after I'm done. So that's one of the first things I'll probably upgrade here. But let's fire this thing up and get printing, see what it can do. All right, so I've fed the filament all the way up through this machine. Let's plug in the provided SD card and print out some of the sample models. Let's see, where does this go? Probably on the side here. All right, let's print. Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm going to have to do some setup first. So first I'm going to do the manual leveling and then go through a mesh bed leveling. Oh my, I just told it to go to point two and it's going way down. Okay, so it's homing everything again. Now we gotta wait for it to come all the way up. Wow. I guess Creality really doesn't care about wasting your time with this procedure. Oh, there we go. This one's moving just straight over. That's nice. Seems like there's a dip in this bed, so the middle is a little bit lower than the sides, but this will work well enough. Now let's do our auto bed leveling. Okay, I guess we're waiting for it to go down to the bottom again. Uh, well, I'm in no hurry. Creality sent me this. They sent me two reams of paper. I don't know what this is about. I'm, I'm actually really confused right now. It's just printer paper. This is a 3D printer. It doesn't take printer paper. This is uh, genuinely confusing. They also sent me this, which makes a little more sense. This is 3D printer filament. Here's some nice matte PLA. We'll give this a try a little bit later. Successfully went down to the bottom, and now we're going back up to the top. All right, it looks like the automatic bed leveling is complete. I guess I'm ready for a print. Let's go for the rabbit. So now we gotta wait for it to home at the bottom. Any day now. One thing that's a little annoying is it's got a pretty loud fan in the base of the machine that turns on whenever you turn the machine on. Even when it's not printing, it makes quite a bit of noise. So that's something that I'd like to improve on here. Maybe swap out a silent fan just to get it to quiet down a little bit. 
but we'll look into that in the next video. All right, I've done all I can do to get this machine up and running. Now we've just got to leave it to its own devices and we'll see what kind of print quality it gets. That was a pretty fast little print. The accelerations were set pretty high. The print quality is pretty good though. That's with some pretty fast print speed settings. I mean, this is a pretty promising first look. Creality always does this. They ship with this really sticky polycarbonate. All right, next print, we'll do the test boat. And we gotta wait for it to go all the way down first before it picks itself all the way back up. I'm just gonna do my first mod right now, which will be to remove this thing. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know I like to tinker with these things and improve them as I'm doing my reviews. And one of the things I'm gonna improve right now is visibility. Okay, there we go. And now I can see what's going on a little bit better. This shroud is a little bit overbuilt. It's sheet metal, but I think we're, we'll be better off without it. Also, it adds a small amount of weight, which if you know anything about hot end design, you want to minimize the weight as much as possible. Now you can see this kind of odd design choice to go with the Sprite extruder without the normal Sprite hot end on here. And instead they attached a little segment of Bowden tube and then they have a completely different heat sink design. That heat sink is both heavier and larger than the old one, so it's uh, it's not my favorite choice there. Okay, the accelerations on this machine are significantly higher than on my Ender 3. This is definitely going a bit faster than anything I've done on my other Ender machines. This is actually pretty impressive. I think this machine could really benefit from some vibration compensation, that fancy stuff that you can do in Clipper that lets you turn your speeds up even higher. But even just this base machine seems to be running extremely well at these higher speeds. Well, let's just let it run and see how this Benchy turns out. This benchy just finished up. It took about an hour. Oh, I hate this bed surface. But you can see this benchy turned out really nice. This is one of the nicest benchies I've ever printed. And it came out pretty fast too. All right, on to the next challenge. So here goes one more print. This is part of the Gridfinity ecosystem. I'm basically trying to find a way to store all my tools and crap. And this seems to be one of the good solutions for that. All right, first layer is finishing up. Let's see how layer number two goes. All right, that's pretty speedy. Nothing too crazy, but definitely a lot faster than what I normally print at. As you can hear, this machine is a little noisy. It's not too bad compared to some of Creality's other offerings. Other printers that turn off all the fans, like the Biku Huracan and the Tronxy Crux and the Artillery Sidewinder X2 that I recently reviewed, they're much quieter at standby because it turns all of the fans off when it's not printing. This one tends to keep a couple fans on in the base, regardless of if it's printing or not. So that's just a little bit of extra unwanted noise. When Creality offered to send this machine over to review, 
my first thought was, have these guys seen my videos? I'm usually not too kind in my reviews. After testing this machine, I think it's a design that they can be proud of. And I think it's the best 3D printer that Creality has ever made. It prints fast, it's relatively quiet, the build quality is above average, and the design overall is quite good. Everything from the wiring to the spool holder placement seems well thought out and well designed. There's a few improvements that I'd like to make to the hot end, and I'd like to do something about these loud fans in the base of the machine. So I'll be doing a follow-up video where I mod the heck out of this thing and just make it a lot nicer. But overall, this is a really good start for a printer, and it seems relatively moddable compared to some of the other entries on the market. I really think that there's some upgrades that I can make to this machine to get it printing at kind of a, a really insanely high speed. So if you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you can check out those mods later. I think this has the potential to become one of their best sellers. It's a little bit more expensive than the Ender 3S1, but it offers a lot more advanced stuff, like this bigger hot end, better part cooling, an all metal heat break, and it retains a lot of this 4020 extrusion, which can be used to bolt on other upgrades, and I'm definitely gonna be taking advantage of that in my future videos. So I think Creality's really stepped up to the plate big time when it comes to the Ender 5S1 design. I think they've done a great job with this printer. I'm not sure if I'd recommend the Ender 3S1 compared to this. On all my Ender 3s, when I wanted to upgrade them, I upgraded to like a really big nozzle and just printed really slowly laying down a ton of plastic because those machines couldn't move very fast. So the only ways that I could enhance my print speed were to just extrude thicker lines of plastic. But this thing is built really well and it seems like it can move really fast. So I'm not gonna have to resort to installing a larger nozzle on there. I think when I upgrade this, I'm gonna keep the 0.4 millimeter nozzle size so that I can print all these standard kind of objects. I mean, most things are designed to be printed with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So sticking with that standard nozzle size is really nice. And if you have a motion system that can keep up and move really fast, then you can still print at high speeds and you can print large objects using a smaller nozzle like this. So I'm really excited to see what I can do with this printer. And just a quick update on my modder boards. I'll be featuring the next version of the modder board on the Ender 5S1 when I start doing my upgrades to this machine. I should be getting in a shipment of those modder boards next week. So I'll be able to start shipping out those pre-orders. And I wanna give a huge thanks to anyone who's bought one of these boards. It was a lot of work developing it. But now that we've got these great printers to work with from Creality in the form of the Ender 3S1 and the Ender 5S1, we can just slap on one of these modder boards and plug in all sorts of upgrades on here. I think it's gonna be an exciting time for everyone. I appreciate anyone who's made a pre-order here and all my patrons. That really helps me keep going and making new content, and buying new equipment to test and experiment with. I'll be releasing a lot of new videos over the next couple of months. And happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Make sure to say hi to all your friends and family and keep an eye out for those sweet Black Friday deals. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Oh no. This looks like it's a different board entirely. Very similar layout, but it's different. So I'll have to do some compatibility testing with my Ender 3 breakout board.